Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to return to the subject of SSDs or solid state drives. I first made a video on this topic in April 2010. However, since that time both technologies and applications have moved on, so I thought it was time for an update. SSDs are storage devices that save data not onto spinning magnetic disks, but using non-volatile flash memory chips. Because they have no moving parts, SSDs can read and write data much faster than traditional disks, so allowing a PC to boot up and launch programs far more quickly. SSDs are also more robust, use significantly less electricity, and hence generate less heat. Due to these advantages, an increasing number of desktop and laptop computers are being fitted with an SSD, either as their sole storage hardware, or as the boot drive in a multi-drive system. Such SSDs typically come in a 2.5 inch casing, and may directly replace either a traditional 2.5 inch hard disk, or a 3.5 inch hard disk, when fitted into a suitable mounting bracket. Like all good things, SSDs inevitably have several disadvantages. Most notably, they typically have a lower capacity than comparable hard disks, while also having a higher cost per gigabyte. SSDs also suffer from having a limited number of write cycles, which leads to an inevitable performance degradation over time. Due to this limitation, SSDs require appropriate configuration and system management to maximise their lifespan. SSDs store bits of data by trapping or releasing electrons in the floating gate transistors that comprise their flash memory cells. The first SSDs use single level cell or SLC technology that stored one bit of data per cell. However, virtually all modern SSDs use a multi level cell or MLC technology that allows more than one bit of data to be retained in each cell. Until recently, MLC technology was 2-bit only, with each cell capable of storing 4 states, and hence 2 bits of data. There are, however, now SSDs that use 3-bit MLC technology, otherwise known as TLC or triple level cell, and which can distinguish 8 states to allow the storage of 3 bits of data per cell. The advantage of 2-bit or 3-bit MLC is that it allows higher data densities to be achieved, so facilitating bit growth and reducing the cost of SSD storage. This said, the disadvantage of MLC technology is that the more states are graduated into each cell, the more difficult it is to repeatedly read and write data values. This means that 3-bit MLC SSDs are slower and have a more limited lifespan than those based on 2-bit MLC technology. In turn, 2-bit MLC SSDs are slower and less robust than single level cell hardware. When shopping for a new drive, purchasers should carefully consider the kind of technology on which an SSD is based. Samsung, for example, sell their latest 840 series SSDs in Evo, Standard and Pro models. Here, the Pro series uses 2-bit MLC, so making them faster and more durable, if also more expensive per gigabyte and more limited in capacity. The Standard 840 drives then use 3-bit MLC, while the latest Evo models use 3-bit MLC, but have a 3GB TurboWrite buffer of SLC memory to which data is initially written, hence increasing drive speed, if not durability. For most users with typical requirements, a 3-bit MLC SSD will be fine. However, individuals seeking absolutely maximum performance may prefer to pay more for a hybrid drive like the Evo, while those seeking speed and durability may wish to sacrifice capacity by purchasing a 2-bit MLC model. Personally, I've just purchased a 128GB Samsung 840 Pro as the boot drive for a new business PC. Not least, I wanted a 5-year guarantee only available on Samsung's 2-bit MLC Pro models. While simply replacing a hard disk with an SSD will work, Optimal configuration may improve performance and maximise a drive's life expectancy. Most importantly, the operating system must be set never to defragment an SSD, as this will decrease performance by incurring unnecessary data writes. With an SSD fitted, trim support should also be enabled, 
as this informs the drive when data is either marked for erasure or is no longer valid. Disabling defragmentation and enabling trim should happen by default if you're using an SSD with Windows 7 or Windows 8. Most SSD manufacturers also now supply a free, easy-to-use optimization utility, such as the SSD Magician software provided by Samsung. Not that many years ago, most video programming was originated, edited and archived on tape. But today, the plastic boxes on a camera operator or editor's shelves are increasingly likely to contain standard, if high-speed, 2.5-inch SSDs. These are then inserted, sometimes in a caddy, into field or studio SSD recorders. Here, for example, an Atomos Ninja 2 is recording 150 megabit ProRes HD video directly to a 2.5 inch SSD. Back in the early 1990s, some of the very first SSDs were labelled as solid state disks and served as the storage media for early handheld computers. Since that time, SSDs have taken on a whole host of form factors including those of traditional 2.5-inch drives, PCIe and mSATA cards, USB memory keys, a wide range of flash media, and backup devices like this excellent 256GB USB 3 SSD from Integral. By the end of this decade, we should also expect SSDs to have developed further still, and to replace hard disks as our primary storage media. More information on a wide range of computing topics can be found on explainingcomputers.com. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.